Fluffy and cowboys. I mean, come on, Tarantino. Are you just having a foot fetish or something? This film, man, like, what? Hello, guys, and welcome back to another Barbarian Film Club review with me, Nush Barbarian. Yes, I'm a little bit tipsy. And yes, I have just come back, and it's 11 o'clock at night, from seeing Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. What a film. I feel like every time I come here, I have seen a film that has completely surprised me. And I think 2019 has got to be that year that every single film is so unexpected, yet surprisingly good. <laughs> okay, let's start with this for a film review. Let us go. This is the, probably the first time I've come, gone to a cinema and come back and reviewed it. And the reason why is because this has shocked me so much. I just was not expecting to laugh so much in this film. I was not expecting to see a Tarantino film and not know it's a Tarantino film. I mean, of course you have got those... Can my neighbors be a little bit more quiet? Bloody hippies. Ugh. This review is gonna have many spoilers. So please, if you have not seen the film, this is one of the reviews I will say you probably cannot watch unless you've seen the film because the spoilers will literally ruin your whole preference of the film and I'm only saying that now because I had no idea of anything that was gonna happen in this film and that's probably the first time that's ever happened because I am a spoiler queen. I always go and watch YouTube videos before they've come out. Yes, I know, I have issues. But I'm a film nerd, what can I say? I need to know what I'm getting myself in for. So, anyway, what is this film about? This film is about a set of actors in Hollywood pretty much going about their day-to-day -day life. And it also involves the very serious murder case of the Charles Manson murders and also Sharon Tate who was murdered during those times, who was pregnant with her first baby. Very, very sad. I am a bit of a crazy person when it comes to murder, like stories and also theories and, and of course um, cases. Uh, I also studied um, uh, criminal psychology so I am a bit of a nerd when it comes to that. In school I was obsessed with this stuff and I have no disrespect to any of the families involved. Obviously I am completely, I my heart goes out to anyone that as she knows this family, but at the same time, I feel like Tarantino did a very, very good job in involving her case in this film. So this storyline, I pretty much knew that it was about Sharon Tate, but apart from that, I didn't really know much else. I knew that Leonardo DiCaprio was involved in this, but they're not really connected. They are and they're not. So Sharon Tate and Leonardo, completely separate, but they are neighbours and this whole film is pretty much flipped between their two lives and you see a struggling actor and his uh, stuntman which is Brad Pitt and of course you have their neighbour which is Sharon Tate and her husband who is a famous director in the 60s. So if anyone doesn't know this film is set in the 60s and yeah like I just was not expecting any of it at all at all and I, I'm gonna keep saying that because I just I, I'm in a bit of shock you, everyone knows that Tarantino's films last around three hours and this film literally went by in a flash I don't know if it's because I had one drink or two might have been but I've also drunk in other Tarantino films like Django and I feel like I mean I love those those films so much but this felt like it lasted like two minutes like I'm not joking so it became to the end of the film and I was like oh when is when is the part gonna happen and I'll get a bit further into the details in a second but it never happened anyway so I can't say too much without giving the whole film away I will give spoilers but like I just can't say too much because I feel like it's gonna ruin your experience so I'm gonna say enough that won't give it away but anyway Ah, I'm blabbing. <laughs> so, unlike every other Tarantino film as well, Tarantino normally has these chapters. This film did not have it, and I feel like he wanted to kind of tease the audience into thinking that 
the moment that Sharon Tate will die will be in this film. But of course, I'm hoping you've already seen this film. And in that case, you will know that she does not die in this film. And I was kind of disappointed when I didn't see her die. <laughs> I am so sorry, that sounds awful. It really does, but I just didn't, you know what, I, I've, I've studied the case and I, I know everything that happened with the murders and nothing that I knew happened really in the film, if that makes sense. So it was kind of nice because it was more fiction than reality, but of course you've got to remember that this was such a brutal case and in a way, Tarantino made this a bit of like a glory, glorified version and a Disneyfied version of the real case, in, in my opinion. Although I think it was an amazing piece of film. film. Now, I can never say that word. It was an amazing piece of filmography, beautifully shot, so many great actors in this film. The little child that played Leonardo DiCaprio's um, like sidekick or child, uh, not child, but one of the co-stars that he was in in the film. I thought she was an amazing actress. I think she's gonna do great stuff in the future. Like if I knew a 12 year old that could act like that, I'm literally thinking, you know, she is going to be someone and she's gonna do great. Of course, Tarantino really does pick his act, pick, he always picks his act as well, so. I'm not surprised in that sense. Anyway, I'm still, I, I'm still trying to gather my thoughts if I think it was like a really good film or not. It was a good film. Yes, it was. In fact, I think that it brought a lot of stereotypes from Hollywood, like from the 60s, even till now. There were so many things in this film that you just remember and go, yeah, like that is so Hollywood and they take the piss out of it. Like the very, like, you know how actors are just such drama queens sometimes, not always, but sometimes they put that in there. I loved how they showed that social media wasn't really prevalent in those days and you could just walk in, into a cinema as a famous actress and just not be recognized. Like it really brings you down to earth and you realize just how much social media has an influence on how people recognize pe other people and famous actors and celebrities and it it kind of made me a bit sad I was just like mm, what is going on with our world like we just cannot leave these people alone we're just so obsessed with the higher up people and the people that have status when we don't focus enough on ourselves and wow we are getting in deep I'm getting so dramatic a little bit like this film but Anyway, what am I doing? Did I just do that? Yeah, like now that I'm really processing it, I really do think that, I, I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10, okay? A seven out of 10. And the reason why I won't give it, give it any higher is because, yes, it shocked me, and I think that's a good thing. I do not think, you know, this, this film is going to get mixed reviews, and I know that because people do not like having things that are unexpected, which is not a good thing, guys. You need to have a bit of an open mind, yeah? But you do have to see the perspective of the actual story of Sharon Tate and the Charles Manson murders. Like, I wanted to see a bit more of, like, the real deal, I guess. And I think that's why most people probably won't like this film. But I do take into perspective that up until that point at the end, it was amazingly made, like everything was on point. I did not blink. I was focused on the screen the whole time. And the whole point of a film is to grab your audience and to entertain them. And that is what it did for me. Yeah, I left thinking, oh, I could have done with like a brutal murder, but I mean, you can't have it all guys, really. You really can't. So therefore I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. I highly recommend this film. Please go see it if you haven't already. Well, I've ruined it for you if, I, if you haven't already, but if you haven't already, or if you have seen it already, just go see it again, because I think I'll go see it again. I love Tarantino, I love all his films. I think he's an amazing director, and honestly, like, yeah, it has its flaws. Every film has one flaw. There's always something you can do better in everything you do, and 
Therefore, I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. And I'm gonna go to bed because clearly I need some sleep. So I will see you guys in the next movie review. And yeah, please like and subscribe to this channel. It is new and it needs building, but we're here to entertain you guys and to hopefully have some discussion on films, which is what we're here for. And I will see you guys later.